Hey guys, this is Eric Cortina again. Uh, in an earlier video, I showed you how to use these uh, shims uh, to uh, adjust your uh, seating depth on your daughter rounds with your uh, using them with your Wilson die. Uh, there's another uh, type of shims that they make. I think these are also skip uh, shims, and these are for your uh, to adjust your bump on your shoulder. Uh, on your uh, sizer die, uh, these, you know, you have a, <clears throat> you have your die. This is a full length sizing die, and you would have, a, uh, let's say, you're bumping too much. Let's just say you're bumping uh, ten thousands. You know, you screwed it down too much. Um, then you can add one of these shims on here and then you would screw back down on your press and uh, that would raise the die uh, by the amount marked on these on these notches this is five thousandths so you know you can uh, put an eight thousandths or so shim in here this is not all the shims you actually get more than than what I have here but uh, you would put a, a shim in there and you know if you had ten thousandths bump and then you put an eight thousandths shim in here. Now you would only get two thousandths bump. Uh, again, you get a different. You can vary the the bump in one thousandth increments uh, using a different combination of shims. Uh, the other re place where these really come in handy, and I don't. I actually don't use these on my dies. Uh, I actually have a Forster uh, coax press, so I would have to come in from the top at which point they don't fit uh, so I don't use them but they're a great tool for uh, for just a regular regular press like a rock chucker but where I use them the most is in my uh, drawer trimmer drawer trimmer I use uh, locking uh, nuts once I have my depth set I use locking nuts uh, so that I don't ever lose my place. I can remove them, put them back, and it's dead on. But if I have, uh, let's say, new brass that I want to true up, but I don't want to take it to the final, final depth yet, uh, I can stick a you know 5,000 shim in here, put it in there, and uh, snug it down, and my brass is going to trim 5,000 longer. What I do is I true them up before I neck turn, but again, we'll get to that on a later video. But uh, again, you can use these shims. I use them mainly on my Gerard uh, trimmer to adjust my uh, trim depth. So uh, again, these are very useful. They're uh, great to have. And uh, again, it's a cheap tool that it's almost a must. It's uh, If you have it, I guarantee you, you find good use for it. Just uh, one little quick tip on the on more shims. These are for your dies. Uh, again, you get these from Brown Nails, Sinclair. They're actually pretty cheap. I don't know what I paid for them, but they come in useful. Again, guys, if you like these videos, so uh, give me some thumbs up, sus uh, subscribe, and uh, you know maybe in the comments uh, tell me you know uh, give me some ideas to some other things you would like to see. Um, again, these are short videos, just kind of getting warmed up. Uh, we're gonna go in depth. We're gonna. My plan is to go in depth and to, uh, you know, actually maybe do a full rifle build step by step. Uh, take it to the range, uh, develop a load for it, and uh, you know, take it all the way to uh, competition and see how it performs. Everything we have done together in in the video later videos I'm actually gonna show you guys how I make a lot of my tools because a lot of my tools I make uh, or modify just because I don't like what's out there but uh, we'll talk about all that later